Hello and welcome to another Who Review. Today we are doing Dinosaurs in a Spaceship. I happen to think that Dinosaurs in a Spaceship is a really good story. I thought it was incredibly strong for Series 7, which so far is proving to be absolutely fantastic. So here I go, talking about the things I liked and the things I hated. Unlike John Granston, who is doing this in his video all the time, uh, I may not be so nice. However, I do like this story and it's important to remember that there's just a lot of things I didn't like. So here we go. Obviously it opens up with the Doctor rounding up his companions. Let's first talk about Queen Nefertiti, or Nef. Obviously Queen Nefertiti, everybody knows her and she was a strong female companion, she was very good and as we found out later on uh, she actually made, you know, she was an incredibly valuable companion to have certainly in the eyes of the enemy but I thought she was very good, wouldn't mind seeing her return. Let's move on to Riddell. Now, Riddell I thought he was fantastic but I couldn't help but think who was he? I mean like I've never heard of Riddell was he an actual historical person or a made up historical person? Either way that left me being a bit confused I was sort of spent the, the entire episode thinking about that but he was very very good I thought he's possible companion material right there he actually reminded me a bit of Bob Peck uh, in Jurassic Park who gets uh, eaten by raptors I do believe very very good though and uh, a very funny and a very pleasant character. We then meet uh, Rory's dad, Brian, or Brian Pond, or Brian Williams, whatever you want to call him. Mark Williams is one of my favourite actors. Obviously, he did the Harry Potter, but more importantly, he did the Fast Show. It seems New Who have a fantastic ability at creating great parental characters. For example, you've got Jackie Tyler, and you've also got Donna's grandfather. Wasn't too keen on Martha's side, but never mind. Yeah, Brian, absolutely fantastic sort of ma everyday man's man type of character. He carries a trowel around with him. Who wouldn't want to be like that? I'm going to start carrying a trowel with me. He plays a bit of golf. Fantastic guy, but also a fantastic addition to the TARDIS team. In my opinion, bring him back. And if it wasn't for the fact that Amy and Rory are leaving, actually, it doesn't matter if they're leaving. Bring him back. So once we've rounded up, Everybody, we go into the title sequence. Now, to be honest, I just uh, I just despair. I really do. What they've tried to do is add a bit of colour to a very, very bland title sequence. And um, I mean it. I mean, like, love it or hate it, it's bland. It's clouds, it's thunder, and it's the TARDIS. All they've done is contrast... they Instagrammed it, and it's rubbish. And then the contrasting... Uh, title graphic comes up it just looks terrible I don't like it get rid of it Moth get rid of it dinosaurs the dinosaurs and the spaceship and the mill have done a fantastic job at it I thought they were really really good the reason they're on the spaceship is justified and that is explained because I would have been annoyed if it, they were just on the spaceship I'm very fond of them See? The Silurians, now this is the thing obviously the Silurians are carrying the dinosaurs it's very plausible I can believe it but I'm getting fed up of seeing the same old costumes being taken out. I know it's budget saving, I know in an ideal universe you're going to bump into these races now and again, but for me I just, I'm getting fed up, I'm getting fed up with seeing them. We already know, well I already know, they're coming back as well later this season with the Sontarans. It's just repetitive, I mean for God's sake, give us some new people. Obviously, they go exploring, a little bit of explore here, a bit of an explore there, and they find out the ship is powered by tidal power. How fantastic is that? A lot of people on Twitter have been complaining, I've seen that. They're saying, oh, well, now they're getting ridiculous. But, I mean, it's pretty plausible, isn't it? It's like kinetic power, something which we have but we don't endorse. And I'm saying now, just because you don't like wind turbines doesn't mean they don't have a use and a value. I love wind turbines, they're great. But a tidal-powered ship, how fantastic. It's as if... Uh, uh, Chris Chibnall has actually been conversing with Douglas Adams. It's that much of a great idea, so I think it's absolutely great, and I don't care what you all think. Obviously, then, we meet the Mitchell and Webb robots, and what fantastic robots they were. I mean, what fantastic costumes slash props they are. They're absolutely brilliant. They remind me of The Labyrinth, which is a film I love anyway. Um, Mitchell and Webb, again, did a great performance, although, to be honest, I wasn't that convinced to kind of... I don't know, the comical robot thing is fun, but it started to get ridiculous, they got on my nerves. Um, I will say though, that um, David Mitchell did do the better voice, 
Just saying, exciting moment for me. The Chuckle Brothers got a mention in Doctor Who. Had to fit it in there somewhere. Obviously then you meet the Triceratops. Wasn't it lovely? Come on, it was sweet. You got to bond with it. Uh, I think I've seen it before, walking with dinosaurs. I don't know. Bit of BBC prop recycling there. Obviously one of my main problems with what they had was actually the fact that the episode was filled with lots of innuendos. Uh, I've got nothing against that. It's just to be honest, after a while they're kind of getting a bit repetitive. It got on my nerves. So remember, it is a kid's show. It's not for adults. It's, well, it's a family show. To be honest, too many in there. I think you could have left in one or two, it would have been fine, but I've clocked up a total of five, that's quite a lot. Don't call me Mary Whitehouse, but just saying the bit about him carrying his golf balls was funny. If they had left it at that, I would have been happy. Went on a bit too much, kind of just my opinion. Then we meet uh, Solomon, what a dude, what a fantastic villain he was. Obviously David Bradley, who was who played the villain there, he was obviously also Filch in Harry Potter. He was very good and he did a very good job at reeling you in. Because at, at first you started to wonder who is this character, what's he about? Then suddenly he shows his true colours by being complete and, um, forcing the Doctor to help him out. Another thing I'll say is brilliant is the fact that uh, They've kept going with the fact that the Doctor now doesn't exist, which is really great because I think it opens up the um, it opens up the future of Doctor Who to really expand into the fact that he doesn't exist anymore. He can get into more incognito situations, and you can actually it opens up a different lot of stories because I think after a while everybody knew who he was, and it started to get a bit ridiculous and a bit repetitive. So very good. One thing I will say also, the Indian Space Agency, that was very good. The set design is fantastic and the concept is great. That you've actually got a, the spacecraft and it's got the traditional Indian values like the doorways, the arches and etc. I thought it was very, very nice. I thought it was a nice touch. Solomon, what a He killed the Triceratops. This moves me on to my next big thing is that the fact that at the end the Doctor did something unspeakable. He actually killed a man. Well, regardless of what, of what anybody says, uh, I do believe uh, the Doctor is responsible for this. He programs it in the computer. He went in there with full intent to kill Solomon. Obviously Solomon did kill a Triceratops. We, we can't forget that. That was a very cruel thing to do. Uh, he also killed a lot of uh, Silurians, which is bad. Pretty much destroyed every single one of them in cold blood, so he did deserve it. But was the Doctor's means necessary? Um, I don't know. I think there could have been a, a different way in which he could have got his comeuppance without death. So, I'm not too sure about that one. I know that, that could spark a big de debate down here. I don't know, but I, that's just what I think. Okay, then lastly we've got Brian going travelling with the Doctor, which is brilliant because obviously at the start he said he didn't travel and now he travels. Perhaps that could spark off a mini-series, little sketches between the Doctor and Brian going on adventures. I'd love that. It's a shame he's not staying on because it would have been fantastic. Also, you've got the final shot with um, Brian sitting in the TARDIS with a cup of tea looking out to space and then it wonderfully goes around the TARDIS and then moves out. Although I will say this, wrong windows, you've got the windows wrong CGI people. <sighs> but that's what I think, I give it a 7 out of 10. Sorry this has been a bit rushed, there's so much going on in this house. Look forward to David next week rocking out the review on the Cowboys. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be seeing you soon.